This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. So I've just been through the frustrating uh, process of trying to emulate the Keeley Halo within the Helix world. Now you'll know on this channel that I love the HX Stomp and the Helix as much as almost anyone. Um, but I think they can, you know, there are these certain kind of holy grail things that can be very frustrating to try to exactly dial in. I think reverbs and delays can be one of these areas. Now I spent a lot of time trying to get this right and I'm not an expert on any of this stuff so what I started off with was the crisscross delay because this can feed one side into the other and I experimented with the feedback things I don't think this is exactly 375 and 500 milliseconds so I kind of tweaked those to be different um, then I've also kind of experimented with having all sorts of different stuff but what I ended up with is having an ADT kind of tape machine because this is not actually throwing things left and right particularly. What it's kind of doing is um, just having the stereo separation slightly left and right so that at, at the center of the stereo field you have your note and then to the left and right you have kind of the repeats happening at the same time. It's not doing like a ping pong thing. So all in all, uh, very <laughs> kind of difficult to, to emulate. There's also a tiny bit of diffusion in the tails of these as far as I can tell, which I can't control on the Helix. Uh, particularly one thing that I did try to do to introduce some of that was to add in some particle verb um, but at the end of the day then uh, let me know in the comments whether you thought it got close or close enough I'll see later on if I can get a bit closer with the fractal once I can get the energy back up to to decide to do like an A B thing. But there are little other things that I've had similar experiences with, like the Meris Mercury Seven. I think the Meris Poly Moon might be the sort of thing as well where I just end up in a situation where it's like, okay, I can maybe get sort of close, but at the end of the day, it's not doing exactly the thing that I would want it to do. Similarly with something like the Strymon, Big Sky, some of those emulations in there, the cloud reverbs. There are some holy grail effects I think that you can't just, I think I personally have really struggled with uh, because they're kind of like, you know, it's a lot of different effects going on at the same time. So within here, you've got these two delays that are bashing off of each other to some extent then in the tail of things you've got like a bit of compression going on one thing that's really difficult to to control so it seems like the first repeat in the helix uh, ends up being too loud if i try to compensate for the longer tails here so it seems like the ratio of the actual repeats is, is kind of different uh, in the the halo itself that first repeat is maybe a bit softer than in the helix and then the tails are a bit more present it's little things like that that are really difficult to i mean if you're really caring about the nuance of these things then a delay algorithm you know they're all slightly unique i think in, in a lot of ways um let me know your holy grail effects you know there's things in the helix that i cannot replicate in other 
parts as well. It's not a, a, a one-way situation, you know, like if I wanted something to do the dynamic plate sound, um, you know, I wouldn't be able to necessarily emulate that with anything else but that reverb algorithm that Norm wrote. It's just one of those situations where you think, right, the Helix can do pretty much everything, but if you sit down with something a little bit um, mysterious or something that's been really designed by someone, you know, like the Yamaha UD Stomp, um, where Alan Holdsworth himself programmed a bunch of those things, or the Keeley Halo where Andy Timmons and Robert Keeley have clearly sat down and tried to nail down this thing, or like the Strymon algorithms where it's like a very much uh, a unique kind of thing, or if it was Valhalla Supermassive, um, you can get in the ballpark of these things, and likewise, you know, in Fractal, I, I'm pretty sure I could get close, but I'm not sure that I'd be able to exactly nail down that tone to the point where you wouldn't, you know, be able to pick up that it's not exactly the thing. I think that's the one, yeah, maybe, maybe don't be super complacent, like that you could definitely nail down everything because, you know, there are effects out there like this that are still very special, I think, um, especially when I hear it in, in, in the mix. This is quite a beautiful little delay sound and obviously this Andy Timmons Halo thing is, is sort of a real thing. Um, difficult to emulate, not impossible, but um, just one thing that I wanted to say, at least that I think is a really nice, that's not even getting into the kind of infinite hold thing, which again, it might be tricky for me to try to emulate. So um, yes, the Helix can do a bunch of stuff, but when it comes to really trying to emulate something like some of these algorithms that do exist, uh, I think it can be something that can take you a lot of time and potentially be quite frustrating. Whereas, you know, this product does exist for people that are looking for that exact effect. So if there is an exact effect that you need, like a Strymon Flint or, you know, like the Strymon Cloud Reverbs, maybe you think about just using them rather than wasting time like I did trying to nail that sound. Although I think I maybe got close-ish. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Mm -hmm.